Let's read atmospheric data like temperature, humidity, and air pressure from our PicoDev atmospheric sensor using a Raspberry Pi Pico. I'll show you how to connect these two together, run some example code to get those readings. And did you know, you can also infer changes in altitude based off air pressure. Really easy, I'll show you how we do that as well. Let's get started. To follow along, you'll need a Raspberry Pi Pico with pins soldered facing down, a PicoDev atmospheric sensor and expansion board for Raspberry Pi Pico, and a PicoDev cable to connect everything together. Start by connecting your Pico to the expansion board, making sure that the USB connection is on the same side as the two pin battery connector. You can double check that pin number zero on the expansion board is to the left side of that USB connector. Connect your PicoDev cable into the port at the bottom of the board and connect the other end to your atmospheric sensor. And I'll use a PicoDev platform to keep everything nice and secure. And connect to your computer with a USB lead. Find the download section in the article for this tutorial and download the three files you'll need. Right click each link and select save link as. Save them somewhere that makes sense. I'm using a folder that I've made in my documents folder. Open Thonny and use the file pane to navigate to where you saved your files. If you need help getting started with Thonny, we have a tutorial for that too. Just briefly, the PicoDev unified file and the BME280 file are drivers for driving these PicoDev modules. The main.py file is the user code for this project. Upload all three files to your Pico with a shift click, a right click and an upload to. And now we can see the three files appear on our Pico. Press Ctrl D to restart the Pico, and we should immediately see weather data streaming up the shell. So in the studio today, it's 18 degrees. The air pressure is at about 1,004 hectopascals, which is the same as millibar, and we're at 70% relative humidity. Press Ctrl C to stop the execution of the script, and we'll edit the file that's directly on the Pico. So coming down to the Raspberry Pi Pico menu, double click main.py, and this is the example code for this tutorial. We start off by importing the PicoDev atmospheric sensor module and also a function to sleep so that we can create a delay. We initialize the sensor uh, using the initialization function and also zero altitude. So we take a altitude reading from the sensor and we assign that to a variable called zero alt. More on that later. In the infinite loop, we just read temperature in degrees C, pressure in pascals, and humidity in percent relative humidity by calling the sensor.values function. Remember, sensor is the instance of our atmospheric sensor. We then do a little conversion to convert from pressure in pascals to pressure in hectopascals by dividing by 100. And then we just print the data to the console. So you can see this print statement, we print temperature C, but we convert it to a string first and then concatenate it with degrees Celsius. And we repeat that for pressure and 4% relative humidity. Finally, there's just a 100 millisecond sleep. So what's going on with this zero altitude here? Well, in the second part of the infinite loop, we have a different print statement. If I uncomment that with Alt-4, and I'll comment out the first print statement with Alt-3. That means that our plot will look a bit nicer. We can take a look at what's happening in this print statement. We're once again calling sensor.altitude, which we were calling before in the initialization. But this time we're taking the difference of the current altitude with the zero altitude. So it's like we're taking the relative altitude measurement from when we first started the Pico, when we first started executing the script. If we save the script with control S and then reboot with control D, now we're reading difference in altitude. And you can see there's a little bit of noise in the measurement, but in general, the line is quite flat. Once this, once this rescales, we can see the noise, it looks like it's between 20, 25 centimeters and negative 25 centimeters, maybe up to half a meter in either direction. We can actually initialize the sensor with a little bit of filtering. When we initialize the sensor, we can pass it the argument IIR, and that's for an infinite impulse response filter. And I'm gonna set the IIR filter parameter to three. I'll save that again. And when we rerun the script, there's a lot less jagged noise in the signal now. And that's gonna be really useful because now 
if I raise the sensor, <laughs> the scales just rescale, but if I raise the sensor, we can see that line trends upwards. And then as I lower it, we can see it trends back down. That's pretty amazing. We, we just raised the sensor by what, half a meter or something? Maybe we can see we're at about 25 centimeters. And now we're at about, ooh, where does it st become stable? We're at about 90 centimeters. And that, you know, that seems about right. That means that we can, inf we can infer altitude differences of less than a meter using just air pressure. We've been editing the file that is on the Raspberry Pi Pico, and you can tell because the main.py title is wrapped in these square brackets. Square brackets means it's on the device. If we open the file that's on our computer, it still looks like it did when we download it. We're still just running the first print statement. If you wanna save your changes, then you can stop the script with Control C, right click that main.py file and download it to our local computer. You'll get a warning that we're going to overwrite the existing file. That's okay for now. And now when we open the file on our computer, it's with the changes that we created. We've got the, the first print commented and the second print uncommented. So we've downloaded the file from our Pico. And there you have some fast atmospheric data using a PicoDev atmospheric sensor and Raspberry Pi Pico. I'd love to see what you make from this starter project. Let us know over on the Core Electronics forums if you make something cool or if you just have some questions. Thanks for watching.